Darlington in England. I am the engineer who supervised the construction of the Victoria Falls Bridge 118 years ago. Things have changed a bit since then. For one thing, the Banji crew now makes more money by throwing people off my bridge than they do from traffic going across. Well, I guess this is what they call progress. When we first heard that Cecil John Rhodes planned to build a rail line from Cape to Cairo, we all thought he was running mad until Douglas Fox and Company were invited to tender and awarded a contract to design this bridge. That is when we realized the Cecil Rhodes was serious. Douglas Fox and Park had talented engineers in their company back. The bridge was designed by George Andrew Hobson, who worked for Douglas Fox and was ably assisted by Ralph Freeman, who is mistakenly credited as the actual designer of this bridge. When in actual fact, he just helped Mr. Hobson in calculating the stresses. He was just a junior member of the company. And I, Monsieur Georges Camille Embo, young and handsome, before the African sun scorched me black. I was fierce, nevertheless and brilliant, was appointed to be the sighted. Our brief was a demand. Just the sighting of the bridge so close to the waterfall had many, many critics. The chief of which was Colonel Frank Rhodes, Cecil John Rhodes on run. He was indignant when he heard that a young Frenchman, George M. O., would be the one supervising the construction of the bridge. He said, if my brother Cecil Rhodes was still alive, he wouldn't have allowed anyone but a British Indian. You can imagine. Cecil John's bones turning in his grave. So everything we did here had to be perfect. We had to consider the fact that the bridge would be almost constantly wet due to its proximity to the falls. The bridge had to be designed in a way that it would shed off water so that it would not rise. We also had to consider the fact that a heavy total load had to be borne when trains crawl and so allowance needed to be made for that movement. We chose a single span steel. Parabolic arch type of a design is meeting all those requirements. That is when we realized this world was very serious. Anyway, back to my big story. One of the biggest advantages of the designer chosen was that it would be self supported eliminating the need for scaffold. The draw was that the bridge needed to be built on both sides of the gold simultaneously, which meant that a huge amount of material needed to be moved across the gold to enable the Zambian side to be constructed simultaneously. Now, George Kamel Embo, young and handsome, designed a cable way to transport this mass material. This consisted of a cable strung across the gorge, suspended from which there was a skiff that carried 10 tons of material. And we named the skiff the Brona, after the legendary Niagara Falls funnel, Jean Francois Gravet, who used to cross the Niagara Falls from the American side to the Canadian side 
balancing on a tight rock back in the late 80s. You see, I used to visit an old friend, a chief from the Zambian side, who could not believe that such kind of a structure could stand without his central pillar support. Every evening, you gather all his subjects, sit on the north edge island, watching the construction, saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel sorry for these white men. They worked so hard for no profit. Early Saturday morning, 1st April 1905, we joined the law orange, and the chief was there watching, saying, eh, eh, it must be the finger of God. That is keeping that bridge standing. You see, it had just taken 30 experienced constructors and about 250 to 300 long lengths. And in just 25 weeks, we manufactured the lower arch to within one and a quarter inches of perfection. An extraordinary feature of injury. It was not all easy though. We battled Marek, Blackwater Thief, and Dissing. Talk of the tropical heat. We had to carry our working tools around in buckets full of water, or else the tools would be too hot to handle. In the end, unfortunately, though, we lost only two lives. But we had built the highest bridge in the whole world, consisting of 1,869 tons of steel and over 100,000 bricks. The bridge was officially opened on 12 September 1905 by the guest of all, who was the president of the British Association of Advanced Science, Professor George Darwin, the second grandson to the famous scientist Charles Darwin. You see, George Darwin is a very, very funny man. He's said to be one of those absent minded academics. Someone among the group asked him how high the bridge was. So George Darwin looked around the rail man and picked a stone just like this one here took out his pocket watch and he led us to the edge of the bridge you see explaining to us as though we were his tool saying i will now demonstrate how you can calculate the height of the bridge by dropping this stone down into the zambezi river while calculating this descent using a watch. So, Judge Darren is that. <laughs> Dropped his watch into the Zambezi River and found foolishly timing the descent while holding the stone on the other hand. <laughs> <laughs> After the old, we all went our separate ways, but saw that was folks and part would go on to offer Ralph Freeman a partnership in their company after he was knighted for his work on the sea in Harbour He later changed his company from Douglas Fox and Partners to Freeman Fox Company. Now, the Cleveland Bridge Company of Dallas, with the proud history of the major falls in the construction industry in Britain. Their recent project was in 2002 when they were appointed for the main construction of the roof of the new Wembley State. And in 2004, they built the Rio Antino Bridge on the Gulf of Corinth in Greece. Now, what about the crazy dream of this road of a capital car railroad? Well, dear friends, that rail line would never be completed for Barachi or Reef, not the least of the death of this road in 1902. The fact that the British government, under the leadership of Lord Salisbury, did not share the enthusiasm of six rods of a cab to car railroad. The line reached Elizabeth Bell in Lubumbashi in 1910, went ahead, ended, and terminated on the postal course of Mombasa and Dar es Salaam. Six rods dream of a cab to car rail line is now a thing of the past, but echoes of it still remain more. On the choice logo of the Victoria Falls Hotel, which incorporates the Southern African Lion and the Sphinx of Egypt, symbolizing Cecil John Rhodes' unfulfilled vision of the cap to car room. And of course, not forgetting this beautiful bridge about the Victoria Falls Bridge. Oh. Anyway, 
Let me not waste much of your time telling you stories, how to drink lava beers, how I fell in love with this African woman. Ladies and gentlemen,